Good morning. It is wonderful to see you all in the house of the Lord this morning. And so as we begin, we want to greet everyone who is joining us online. We welcome you uh, to Kempsfield Church today online and obviously welcome to everyone here. Hey, a lot of you have made it here for the beginning of service. Congratulations. All right. I want to do something. I feel led to just sort of begin prayer this morning, uh, our, our opening of service. I want to read a, a few verses, and you'll understand why a little bit more as we get into the message later. And then I feel led to sort of pray a certain way or have us pray a certain way this morning. But Psalm 18, David said, I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. Amen. As we, if you would, don't mind, join me standing. And I want us to do something this morning. I want to ask you to pray specifically for someone nearby you, that God would touch that individual and minister to them and move in a mighty way this morning. And if you see an empty chair nearby, I want you to pray for them. Pray that God will send them, even though they may be late, that better late than never. And uh, let's pray that God would just do a work in each and every one of our lives this morning. But I want you to intercede for someone nearby you this morning as we pray. Father God, As we come before you, we thank you for the blessing, the opportunity, and the freedom we have to assemble together to worship you and to bless you. And God, as we begin, as we prepare ourselves this morning to receive of the word, we want to come into your gates with thanksgiving and enter into your courts with praise. And so, Father, we pray for one another as well, that God, you know the needs and the heart and the situation that someone may be in right now who is here with us. Lord, for those online as well, you know where they are and what is going on and taking place in their life. And so, God, we pray one for another this morning as well, that you would do a work. Holy Spirit, have your way, not only in this service today, but in our lives. And Father, we just lift up those across this world Lord, those in Ukraine who are being attacked, Lord, we lift them up to you right now. Lord, we pray especially for our brothers and sisters in Christ who are right now in terror and fear of their lives. God, that you would be with them as well. And Lord, we ask you for your help. Holy Spirit, only you can do a work, God. And we ask you, Father, to move in the service today, move in our hearts, move in our lives. Lord, let your anointing, Lord, be tangibly felt and experienced. Let your glory fill this place, fill every soul, touch every heart. Lord, minister, God, through the musicians and the vocalists and through all of us as worshipers. God, as sons and daughters, grafted into the vine, saved and redeemed. O Lord, our God and our rock, our deliverer, we bless you today. We pray, Holy Spirit, move in this place. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen Amen and amen. Let's worship the Lord together today. Heaven thundered, and the world was born. Life begins and ends in the dust you form. Faith commanded and the mountains move. Fear is losing ground to our hope in you. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name, they shall be done. Freedom conquered, all our chains undone. 
And sin defeated, Jesus has overcome. And mercy triumphed when the third day dawned. The darkness was denied when the storm was gone. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name, they shall be done. Unstoppable. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name, they shall be done. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name, they shall be done. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name, they shall be done. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Thank you, Lord. Through you, I can do anything. And I can do all things. Because it's you who gives me strength. And nothing is impossible. Through you, blind eyes are open. Strongholds are broken. I am living by faith. Nothing is impossible. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. I'm not going to live by what I see. I'm not going to live by what I see. down I know that you're here with me I know that you can do anything through you I can do anything I can do all things cause it's you who gives me strength and nothing is possible through you blind eyes are open Strongholds are broken. I am living by faith. Nothing is impossible. I'm not gonna live. I'm not gonna live by what I see. I'm not gonna live by what I feel. Deep down.
ground, I know that you're here with me. And I know that you can do anything. Through you, I can do anything. And I can do all things. Because it's you who gives me strength. And nothing is impossible. Through you, blind eyes are open. Strongholds are broken. I'm living by faith. Nothing is impossible. We believe we can do all things. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in you. Through you, I can do anything, and I can do all things. Cause it's you who gives me strength Nothing is impossible Through you, blind eyes are open Strongholds are broken I am living by faith Nothing is impossible and I believe, I believe in you I believe, I believe I believe, I believe, and I believe, I believe in you. Yes, thank you, Hallelujah. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your salvation through your Son. And we thank you that we can be content in every situation, God, whether in need or in abundance, that we can learn to do all things through Christ Jesus, through your strength, Lord. God, we pray for your peace during this time. We pray for you to raise an army of believers, God, once again, that will call upon your name. We pray in the name of Jesus. Peace, bring it all to peace. Storms surrounding me. Let it break at your name and still call the sea to still the rage in me still every way at your name Jesus Jesus you make the darkness tremble Jesus Jesus Silence Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Call these lungs to live, call these lungs to see. shadows can't deny your name cannot be overcome your name is alive forever lifted high your name can 
not be overcome. Your name, your name is a light that the shadows can deny. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is a light forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome. serve a God who is sleeping and sitting idly by. We serve a God who is powerful and active and right where you are, knowing what you are going through. He can break every chain of bondage, addiction, depression. 
spiritual uh, format, whatever you may be going through this morning, there is power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're going to pray right now. Father God, search us. Oh, Father, we have just declared and we are thankful that there is indeed power in your name. And so, Lord, we come together in one concert, in one family. Lord, brothers and sisters from all backgrounds and all kinds of walks of life, Lord, you brought us all together and we are redeemed together through the blood of Jesus Christ. We are brothers and sisters in one accord today coming before you as your children. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you can break every chain and we do know and you are confident that there is power in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, knowing this truth, we come before you and we submit ourselves. Just do this with me in prayer right now. Say, God, I submit myself. Oh, God, we submit ourselves to you, Lord. Search us and know us, God. Lord, break every chain that is holding us back. Lord, whatever there may be, God, whether it's a hurt, whether it's a problem, whether it's a difficulty, whether it's an attitude this is, that is misaligned with your word, oh, God, search us and know us. Break every chain, God, that we may be truly 100% submitted and yielded to you. God, mold us and make us. Lord, we submit ourselves to you. So break every chain. In the name of Jesus, we pray and believe. And everyone said, amen and amen. God bless you. Turn to your neighbor and say, I am so glad you get to sit beside me this morning. As you are seated, we want to spend a, another moment of prayer here together here in a few moments but we obviously i think everyone knows we need to pray for the situation in ukraine uh, we uh, if you're like me you look at the news constantly throughout the day just seeing what kind of updates there are and uh, we don't know what the end result may be we know what the enemy has planned we know how the enemy is working in our world to try to disrupt and destroy you know, the enemy's plan has always been to steal, kill, and destroy. And so I want to encourage you to pray not only for Ukraine and the peace uh, to come from that, but let's pray that God does the miraculous. Amen? God can do the miraculous. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to just challenge you a little bit. And I, I find myself, it's difficult for me to tell, say this as well in, in some regards because Sometimes it's easy to take the, the one side and not look at the other, but you know, there's people in Russia as well that are not for this conflict, uh, that are not behind this and are not supportive of it. And you know, as believers, we need to pray for our fellow believers as well. Uh, not only the believers in Ukraine, but the believers in the church in Russia as well. We need to pray that God would just do the miraculous, that God would send a mighty host of angels to encamp us protect, to bless, to give favor. Uh, and so we want to pray for the peace in Ukraine uh, and uh, hopefully the end of that war uh, to be taking place very soon and peace be reestablished. Uh, as I was praying and trying to prepare for today, you know, considering the Ukraine situation, there's a lot of messages that are going to be preached across pulpits this Sunday. Uh, that very much in regard to that. And you know, there's so many ways something like this can affect us as people. Uh, there's so many different emotions you can experience. And I think in times like this, as in other times when you've been through stuff before, can I just remind you that where our source is, where our hope lies, and that God is our God. He is still on the throne. He is in control. There's going to be messages preached about how Jesus is coming soon and this is part of end time prophecy and that very well may be true. I will tell you this, the truth that Jesus is coming soon has never changed or wavered or been more or less true. It's always been true. Jesus is coming soon. Uh, so I'm not going to preach from Ezekiel chapter 38 today. I'm not going to preach in Ezekiel 39 or Daniel 8 or Daniel 9. I'm not going to preach those, but I am going to preach what I believe God has put in my heart to share with you today here in a few moments. But until that time, we need to pray. We need to be a people of prayer, not just in service together, but can I tell you, you find yourself growing closer to the Lord. 
when you're going down the road and instead of getting mad at somebody for cutting you off, pray for them. They may be in a real bad hurry. They may, there may be some kind of tragedy up ahead they're trying to get to. Somebody in the hospital they're trying to go see. Pray for them. Uh, pray for those around you when you're going down the road. Pray at home. Pray at work. Pray that God will use you and anoint you. We are vessels of the Lord. The Holy Spirit resides in you. You are His son, His daughter. You're His warrior. You're His child. He has His hand on your life. He's called you and put divine purpose within each and every one of you. Amen? So as we pray this morning, we obviously want to pray in Ukraine. We're going to keep praying for baby Malcolm. I'm just holding on. God's got his hand on that little baby, Brother Damon. And uh, we're going to believe God for, for little baby Malcolm. And we're going to pray for Brother Paul this morning. Paul, raise your hand so everybody can see who we're talking about. He's the great barbecue smoker. Uh, we're going to pray. He's, got, he's had one hip worked on, and now he's going to have the other hip worked on. He's going to be the bionic man. Him and Phil are going to be able to set off every metal detector in the United States and abroad. Uh, but we're going to believe God to be with you this Tuesday, uh, Brother Paul as well. And as you consider the prayer lists that are going before you right now, I invite you to take a phone out and take a picture if you would like to do so. Uh, and take a picture of these prayer needs so that it will inform your prayer this week. And as you take a moment each and every day, I would encourage you to call upon the Lord for these needs, that God would intercede and do a great work. God would minister, that God would help. We have people facing surgery. We have people recovering from surgery. We have people still recovering from COVID. I think most of that's behind us as far as what it's associated with our church. I think most of that's behind us, but we just want to pray for these needs and believe God together. We have missionaries on that board cruising Kadi uh, Paniagua and Wayne and Phyllis Wozniak and the Maranatha ministry that's taking place at this facility. Uh, God's got his hand upon them and, and they, they're fighting the fight of faith just like we are. We are all brothers and sisters in one accord. And so we're going to pray for these needs. And there's a couple praise reports. So praise God for those. Amen. You see, prayer changes things. And so as we pray this morning, we're going to believe God for these needs. That God would do a work. God would intervene. God would move in our hearts as well. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, as we come before you once again, we do pray for Ukraine. We pray, Lord, not only for peace in the region, God, we pray that you would give favor to you. Lord, I'm just going to pray this, and Lord, if I am out of line, forgive me, but I am praying that you would give Ukraine favor, that God, you would help them as they defend their country, as they fight for their homes and lives. God, you would help them and sustain them. God, just as you Bless the Israelites, God, when they fought overwhelming odds and when the world at large would have thought they would be annihilated. God, you were with them. And so, God, be with Ukraine. Give them a supernatural favor, Heavenly Father. Lord, bring peace to the region. Father, the enemy is using wars and rumors of wars and plagues and doing all he can to try to destroy your creation, to destroy your people. Father, we are yours, and we submit ourselves to you. And so, Father, we pray for Ukraine. God, we lift up individuals in our church, God, family members who are here, and some in Indianapolis for, for, a, son, for, a, for a young little baby boy, God, that's been born and brought to this world. You have sent. Father, for baby Malcolm, we write now in the name of Jesus. Damon, I feel led to ask you to stand and raise your hand, both hands towards heaven. Everyone extend your hands right now towards Damon. Father, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, God, touch baby Malcolm. God, bring completion, bring healing, bring full recovery, bring that little beautiful baby home. And God, bless his life, Lord, bless his steps. God, help him to grow, to know you, and to serve you, and to be a mighty vessel of God. Lord, we pray right now for baby Malcolm in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for Brother Paul, God, as he's facing surgery this week. God, you know we know that you are with him. God, we pray that you would grant him favor. Holy Spirit, touch every aspect of the surgery. And Lord, bless his recovery. Father, help him to 
Uh, Lord, use this surgery to help him become more mobile and feel better and healthier and stronger than ever before. And God, we lift up each and every one of these needs represented on our prayer list. So many names, so many situations. You know them all. Lord, they are people we know, people we care about, family, friends, members, God, brothers and sisters. God, we lift them up. Lord, we ask you, Holy Spirit, to intervene. God, for those joining us online as well, whatever they may be going through, whatever, whatever difficulty they may be incurring, Father, in the name of Jesus, move in their life. Father, bring us closer and more near to you than ever before. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen and amen. Let me get some announcements out of the way real quick. Ladies' night, you're going to have a night out. Husbands, say praise the Lord. See, that was a loaded... That was a, I just got you in trouble, some guys. Wife's going to be nudging you. What do you mean? That's this Thursday at 6.30, ladies. This Thursday, you're going to Lanstown, Why Not Italian. The Lanstown, Why Not Italian. Uh, it's going to be a great time, ladies, for you to gather together in fellowship. And then next Sunday evening, uh, the Ladies of Lee from Lee University. It's a choral uh, group uh, from Lee University. That's our, my wife and I's alma mater. Uh, it's where uh, she got her master's degree. I got my bachelor's and master's there. It's a great uh, uh, university that's training people for ministry and work and all kinds of areas of study. And, uh, but the Ladies of Lee is going to be at Azalea Garden next Sunday night. And so we would invite you to put that on your calendar. Make sure you go join with us. I'll be going uh, to, to be a part of that service. But you will be blessed. Uh, I remember from our experience at Lee before, Christy, you remember that when the ladies of Lee uh, sang, I'm telling you what, they moved heaven and earth. They know how to worship the Lord. Uh, it's a tremendous anointed uh, choral uh, group from Lee University. You will be blessed. You'll be touched. Uh, so we invite you to be a part of that at the Zaya Garden Church. And if anyone wants to serve as a host family uh, that Sunday night, please let me know. Uh, as soon as possible uh, because uh, one of the things they uh, Zay is trying to do is, is provide host families on that Sunday night uh, to house them. Uh, so if you're interested in doing that, please let us know. All right? Okay, or let me know after service. And then men, we get to have a time out too. We're not having a night out. We're having a morning out. Uh, that's going to be on March the 12th at 9 a.m. So men, mark your calendars for that as well. Before you, you should have a connect card. And if you have that in front of you, if you have a prayer need, one of the best ways of getting that prayer need included in the slides is to fill out that connect card. Uh, that, uh, that, that brings it through Pastor Brett, and he is so great at keeping all that organized. Sometimes if I'm not careful, if I get a text, I may not. Uh, it's just really good to use that connect card. So. Uh, please uh, make, your, make that Connect card available to you, in front of you. You can fill it out. If you want to just uh, say, hello, Pastor, how you doing? Uh, you can do that too, uh, but uh, we'd love to connect with you. If you are visiting Kempsfield Church, especially for the first time, you can't leave unless you fill out a Connect card. It's obligatory. Uh, we, we know who you are, and we will not let you leave. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, please fill out a connect card. <laughs> We're not going to do that. Uh, Brother Andy's good. He's, he won't do that to you. So uh, fill out a connect card. Uh, we would love to connect with you. Amen. Amen. So join me if you don't mind. I am, I am ready to get into God's word this morning. And so as we consider the word of God, and I, you know, like I said, this has been a lot. My mind has gone a lot of different directions uh, this week as I consider the times. And, I, and I've, I've concluded that instead of preaching towards a social situation or a, a, an event that's going on, I think I'm just going to stick with preaching God's Word. And I'm going to let the Word do what the Word does well, does perfectly. And that is not return void, but do a great work in our hearts and lives. And so I'm going to preach from Psalm 144. I'm going to ask you to join me standing. I'm going to read the first four verses. I thought about reading all 15 verses, but with Pam having a birthday today and uh, I just didn't want to ask her to stand too long. Uh, so we're going to read the first four verses of Psalm 144. Uh, she's just turning 30 today. Uh, so, yeah, give her a hand clap. Uh, I won't say anything else. I'm not going to get myself in trouble. Pastor Brett has 
informed me of the dangers. So the first four verses are this. In Psalm 144, David said, Blessed be the Lord my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle, my loving kindness and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield and he in whom I take refuge, who subdues my people under me. O oh Lord, what is man that you take knowledge of him? Or the son of man that you think of him? Man is like a mere breath. His days are like a passing shadow. Our gracious Lord, Holy Father, Lord, minister to us today. God, I submit myself to you. I am simply your workmanship. I am, I am your servant. Lord, I humbly acknowledge, Lord, I am fighting life just like everyone here. God, I face the same things everyone else faces. I'm human, and Lord, I'm your vessel. I submit myself to you as well. I ask your anointing to help me preach. And Father, we together, we come before you, and we ask you, God, that your word and your voice would speak to us, that you, Holy Spirit, would challenge us, move in our minds, our emotions, our thoughts, our considerations. God, do a work through the preaching of your word today. Lord, those joining us online, I pray that the smell of the pot roast cooking in the cooker will not be a distraction. I pray that, Lord, you would help us all to zone in to consider the word of God today. Lord, let it penetrate and touch our hearts and lives and accomplish what you would have your word to accomplish within us today. In Jesus' name, and everyone said amen. And amen. You may be seated. This morning, the title of the message is Our Mighty, I'm sorry, Our Loving, Mighty, and Gracious God. Aren't you thankful that we serve a loving, mighty, and gracious God? And as we consider this psalm, the reason, if you, if you paid attention to the service, I began with Psalm 18. And indeed, David, as he wrote this psalm, many or, or it's believed that he wrote Psalm 144 around the same time uh, that he wrote Psalm 18. It's when he became the king of Jerusalem. The Psalms are very similar when you consider them. And this Psalm of Psalm 144 is a Psalm of praise and a prayer. As he acknowledges, David acknowledges the dangers around them and, and what they're going through. He, he prays as David is always, that's, I think that's one of the reasons he was known and still known as one of the greatest kings Israel ever had is because he was a man after God's own heart. Was he perfect? No, but he knew the importance of calling upon God in prayer, not only in times of peace, but in times of turmoil, in times of war, in times of difficulty. When you feel surrounded and you feel overwhelmed by life, David recognized the importance of prayer church that praying and saying we're praying for someone and we're praying for the conflict and the war in Ukraine and what's going on there you see there's power in prayer you see for as you enter into prayer you're entering into a spiritual battle that hell is terrified over you see when you pray into God you're praying to a God who is on the throne and in control and moves because people pray Indeed, as we consider the, the promises of Scripture, we know that even God's Word promises multiple times in Scripture that He answers and hears the call of His people as they call to God in prayer. I'm reminded of another Scripture that says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, He will heal their land. We recognize and understand as believers the importance of prayer. And so I'm not necessarily really going to talk about prayer the entirety of this message. I do want us to just reflect and consider this psalm as we acknowledge our loving, mighty, and gracious God. We look at the first four verses. We see a loving God who cares for us personally. Turn to your neighbor and say, God cares for me and God cares for you. Each and every one of us, we have a loving God who cares for us personally. David knew what it was to be a fugitive. He knew what it was like to learn from the valley of experience and the strain of life. If you consider the entirety of David's life and his, 
his beginning, if you will, as a shepherd boy, growing up at home and learning how to shepherd his father's sheep and the call of God upon David's life and how he was anointed, but, but he was anointed to be king, but yet never still was yet to experience that reality yet, still had to go through some things. We remember how, David, how God used David in a mighty way to face Goliath. We remember then how Saul uh, recognized the strength of David, then terrified of the strength of David, and this going back and forth that David experienced, and then the, the times that he hid in the cave. All of these experiences and realities informed him as a king, and yet we find him recognizing in these first four verses that we serve a God who loves us and cares for us personally. Consider again the words of Psalm verse 1. He said, Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Not your, just your rock or someone else's rock. Notice David is saying he's my rock. What is a rock? A rock is something that is firm, that is strong. A rock is something that is not easily pliable at all, in fact. It's not easily broken. A rock is strong. And so as we consider rock, even indeed when you build a house, before you even pour the foundation, you put what under a foundation? Any construction people here you know what I'm talking about? What do you put in the foundation before you pour that foundation of concrete? Rock. Everybody's being real quiet. You can't talk back. We are Pentecostal. In fact, if you don't talk back, I'm going to preach longer. We need rock, a bedrock. And David said, Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war my, and my fingers for battle. My loving kindness and my fortress. Look at these words that David, as he gives praise unto God and acknowledges a loving God who cares for us personally. He's reflecting on the times he's, he's known, he's lived the reality of what it is to to have a fortress you can go to, to have a place of safety that you can find protection and covering. And he says, he's my loving kindness, my fortress, my stronghold. But not only is he our stronghold and our protector, but he is our deliverer. Someone may be here today and you've wondered, how long am I going to be suffering? How long am I going to go through this difficulty? He is God, our deliverer. He may not deliver you right now. He may not deliver you tomorrow. But rest assured, if you continue to call upon the Lord and continue to seek His face, He will show Himself and reveal Himself in your life as deliverer. In fact, you ought to just start praising him now for the delivery that's coming. And so David knew what it was like. Look, he didn't get delivered from the cave in one day. It took him a while. He was hiding in the cave for a long time. But oh, rest assured, God knew where he was in the midst of the cave. God knew where he was when he was facing Goliath. God knew where he was when he was out in the fields watching his father's sheep and abiding by those sheep. I'm getting ready to start quoting Luke if I'm not careful about the sheep or shepherds out abiding in their fields at night and the angel of the Lord. Anyway, David knew what this was. And so he said, my shield and he in whom I take refuge. And so this great king recognized where his safety was, where his provision was. He recognized, I serve a God who cares for me. And we have a God who cares for us. Indeed, if I was preaching to the believers in the church in Ukraine, I would say, rest assured, with all that is going on and all the attacks, we still have a God who knows where you are. And He is your shield. He is your protector. He is your deliverer. And when it seems like the enemy is surrounding you and overwhelming you, church, when you go to work and it seems like nobody loves God, nobody's serving God, it feels like you're in the middle of, of Sheol, if you will, if you don't mind me saying. God sent you there to be a light. God's hand is upon you. His anointing is upon you. You are a mighty warrior of God. God is your fortress. He is your deliverer. He is your loving kindness. He is your shield. He is your strength. He is your buckler. You are an anointed child of God. God's hand is upon you. His anointing is on you. He's a loving God who cares for you personally. So he is with you. He is abiding upon you. His hand 
hand is upon you. Rest assured, he will use you. And so this mighty king of Israel, David, also was humble enough to recognize he was nothing without God. He says, O Lord, what is man that you take knowledge of him? Or the son of man that you think of him? And then look at verse 4. He also recognized his tenure had a time limit. His life had a time limit. Indeed, all of our lives, we have a limit. We have a strategic amount of time to do what God has called us to do. One day, I've told my kids before, one day I'm going to be dead and you're going to wish you talked to me more. <laughs> one day we all will be dead. Unless Jesus comes before we die, we will die one day. Say, Pastor, that's not very nice to say. It's the truth. But when we die, oh, there's a glorious eternity that awaits. And I would much rather spend my eternity in the presence of God than even the nicest room in hell. There ain't no nice rooms down there. I want to be with the Lord. I'm so thankful for God's salvation, His grace, His mercy, and His forgiveness. He says in verse 4, his days, man is like a mere breath. His days are like a passing shadow. He is the loving God who cares for us personally. He's also the mighty God who delivers us victoriously. Somebody say, deliver us. Deliver you got to say it in your breast, preach your tongue. Deliver us. Deliver us. Or deliver us. I like how you're getting into this, Sandy. You're good. I'm going to tell you what, that's my amen corner over there. Normally you're over here. No. Oh, no, no, you used to be. In verse 5, he continues on. And so uh, let's, let's look at this. He says, Bow your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains that they may smoke. Oh, I, I, I have to believe he was thinking about Mount Sinai. When God showed his glory, when Moses was in his presence and God showed up and, and Lord, that mountain was, I mean, fire and billows of smoke and the people of Israel were terrified. They said, no, we ain't going up there, Moses. You go up there and represent us. Ain't no way we're going to get up there. And David's reminding, I, I just believe, I have to believe he's reminded of that, that story that's been passed down to the people of Israel. He said, oh God, let your fires burn once again. Let the smoke roll, oh God, that we may see your glory. Glory fill us one more time, that we may see your glory fall one more time. He is a mighty God who delivers us victoriously. Touch the mountains that they may smoke. Flash forth lightning and scatter them. Send out your arrows. Lord, instead of us fighting the fight, God, you can fight the fight a lot better than we can fight it. So God, let your glory fill. Let your arrows fly. God, let your victory be the, what is we see, oh Lord, working in our hearts and lives. See, the problem is so many times we try to fix ourselves. We try to deal with ourselves. We try to fix others. Have you ever tried to do that before? You can try to fix somebody else until the cows come home and they ain't going to get fixed until we all submit to God. And oh, I've learned the long way. I've learned the hard way as a pastor. I can't fix somebody. Look, I can get up here and stand and preach my guts out. And so many times I know I've even been able sometimes I know God's dealing with somebody. I may not know them personally. I may not see their face. And there are sometimes I know God specifically is dealing with somebody here, but I haven't told you. And I've prayed and I've done the altar call, but I've recognized only God can change people's hearts and lives because here's the other thing, only God can change me. My wife has tried to change me so many times. Oh, she's prayed over me. She's almost beat me half to death. She hasn't done that. <laughs> she will tell you now she's still praying about some things for me. But she ain't give up. And I'm so glad God hadn't given up. But I'll tell you what, when God changes us and when we yield and submit to what God wants to do in our life, we will have life. You see, so many times we look at others and we see other people's problems. It's easy to look at others through a magnifying glass and see what they formality they have in their life or what problem they have or what sin 
they are dealing with. And we want to just look with eyes and say, oh, you need to get saved or you need to get right with God. And that may very well be true. But you see, we all have to be humble enough to recognize we all need God. We need repentance. We need confession. We need to confess to one another our faults. Amen? We need to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. So David, as he prayed to a mighty God who delivers victoriously, he continues on in verse 7, Stretch forth your hand from on high. Rescue me, he says, and deliver me out of great waters. I can't help but think that maybe David's thinking about the Red Sea. Maybe he's thinking about that Jordan. Just as God was with Moses and delivered the people of Israel through the Red Sea as they were being encompassed and, and, and surrounded and, and rushed after by the Egyptian army, Pharaoh and his army who was trying to overrun the Israelites, how God moved the great waters to deliver the people of Israel. No doubt he was remembering what it was like for Joshua as he took over the leadership from Moses and how God even used Joshua to deliver the people across the great waters of the Jordan River. No doubt David recognizes that just as God was with Moses, just as God was with Joshua, so God is with me. And can I tell you the same truth is for us here today still in 2022. God is still revealing himself. God is still delivering us. And we may be surrounded and overwhelmed, it seems, by great waters. But we serve a God who does deliver us victoriously. He is mighty. Rescue me and deliver me out of great waters, out of the hand of aliens. In, King, in the King James Version, it uses the word strange children. Now, some of you parents are here wondering right now, you're looking and you, sometimes you wonder, what in the world kind of children do I have? They're strange children. <laughs> Indeed, we all probably have some strange children in our home. We wonder, how in the world did our kids get to be so weird? I'll tell you why, because they're yours. Your, kid, kid, your children aren't any weirder than you are. My wife will tell you, if our kids are any weird at all, it's my fault. And that may very well be true. But in this case, he's not talking about having strange children. He's, in the NIV, the word is used, aliens and foreigners. You see, David was recognizing that what has happened one of the things that the nation of Israel is facing are those who have crept in unaware, those who have infiltrated the ranks, how the enemy has used others to come in and abide or abode and deceive, to distract and to destroy the people. Rescue me and deliver me out of great waters, out of the hands of aliens. Look at this, who goes on to be more specific, whose mouths speak Deceit, and whose right hand is a right hand of falsehood. You know, like we, you know, when you go to court and they say, raise your right hand. He's talking about how even when they swear an oath, it's an oath of falsehood. Look at this. Whose mouth speak deceit. Right hand is a right hand of falsehood. And then he says this. I will sing a new song to you, O God. Upon a harp of ten strings, I will sing praises to you. Who gives self? Now, let me skip that verse and come back to it. He says, "Rescue me and deliver me out of the hand of aliens, whose mouth speaks deceit, and whose right hand is a right hand of falsehood." He is a mighty God who delivers us victoriously. So, so many times it's easy to recognize the enemy because the enemy is pretty obvious many times. But we must be alert and be vigilant to recognize the enemy also likes to use those who look spiritual, who seem spiritual, who, who for all extensive purposes look godly, talk godly, seem to act godly, but yet they're not godly. We call that heresy, right? We call that, <laughs> uh, we call it a lot of things. I've got some names for it. I'll tell you, there's nothing that, more, that makes me more angry 
that when folks misrepresent the gospel who claim to be heralders of the gospel. That's, and let me tell you something that's taking place in the church at large. The enemy is using the same tactic today. Everybody got really quiet. So you're afraid I'm going to start naming names. I am, I'm going to repeat myself to you as I've done before. That's why we as the people of God must be students of God's word. You can't take my word for it. We have to get into the Word of God ourselves. If the only Word of God you're hearing is on Sunday morning, and Lord help us if it's on Wednesday night too, praise the Lord, wouldn't that be wonderful? But if the only Word you're ever hearing is on Sunday morning, you will starve to death. Look, I, 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 we are starting to have a, a Sunday lunch ritual, and it includes Subway. But if I were only to live on a sub on Sunday and have to wait till next Sunday, I don't care how good that sub is. I'm thinking about it now, in fact. It doesn't matter. You can double meet that baby all you want. You can triple meet that sub. That's a lot of sub right there. But eventually that sub's going to run out and you're going to be hungry, baby. And here's the funny thing. People want to say, Pastor, I'm, I'm just not, I, I don't feel like I'm getting fed here anymore. I need to find somewhere else. And I have to, I, there's been part of me, and I try to always be loving and gracious. Now, let me just put a caveat here. Nobody has said that to me recently, okay? I'm not aware of anybody recently, okay? In fact, now these days, people just don't tell you. They just go, and you wonder where they're at. But it has happened before, and I never forget what somebody told me that several years ago. I'll say it that way. And I remember thinking, well, if you're depending, and I actually even challenged him. I said, the problem is you're relying upon me as your food source. I said, you're not going to get fed if you just rely on what I say on Sunday. I said, we got to be in God's word every day. We have to be in God's word every day. If not... There will be aliens the enemy will introduce in your life who can easily deceive you. Or oh, they'll put stuff on Facebook. They'll put it on Instagram. What's funny are these, these, these ones I, I see that people will share, and, and it has this little thing at the bottom that says, you got to share this with 10 people to get the blessing. And I'm like, just stamp stupid on my forehead if I do that. That's not in the Bible. Hear me, church. One of the greatest signs of the end times is a scripture that prophesies that talks about how in the end days people will have itching ears. They want to hear what they want to hear. They want to be spiritual, but they want to be spiritual the way they want to be spiritual. They don't want to be like David who said, God, who am I that you are mindful of me? Just a mere breath of just a short life. He said, God, deliver me from the deceit of aliens, from those who have crept in. For you are a mighty God who delivers victoriously. And I want you to look at verse 10. Let me go back now. Go back to verse 10. Look what he says. Who gives salvation to king? Or does it say kings? Kings. He's recognizing that, God, I'm not the only king here. Your hand has been upon those before me and those after me. In fact, he's interceding on those after him. Amen? I'm so glad that God's mission isn't just about whether I'm fulfilling it or not. God's mission involves all of us. So he says, God gives salvation to kings. And then he gets personally, who rescues David, his servant, from the evil sword. All right, let's go to skip to verse 12 now. Last thing, the gracious God who blesses us abundantly. Everybody say blessed. blessed. Oh man, it's only 1129. I've got 31 minutes I can keep preaching. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do it. But I like, I like this next part. Here we go. You ready? Everybody say, I'm ready. ready. He is the loving God who cares for us personally. He is the mighty God who delivers us victoriously. And he's the gracious God who blesses us abundantly. And I want you to look in the next four verses, 
three things I want to share very quickly about how David prays. He says, let our sons in their youth be as grown-up plants and our daughters as corners, pillars, as corner pillars fashioned as for a palace. Now, ladies, that, that's just perfect, right? Come on. All the ladies in the house say, "Woo! I get to be a corner pillar fashioned as for a palace. Not a shack, a palace. That's some good preaching right there. I mean, ladies, if you don't like David now, you ought to be. I mean, goodness gracious, yeah, that's, that's a pretty awesome thing he prayed right there. Don't worry, guys, I'm not going to leave you out. He, fat, he prayed for you to be grown-up plants. <laughs> we'll get, we're going to get there. <laughs> David was praying for the youth, for the children, for the future. It's been said that as so goes the home, so goes the nation. Can I tell you, last night I was part of a, I got invited to be part of a prayer thing over the state of Virginia. And one of the things I shared with that group of people praying all across this nation was the importance and how the enemy is attacking not only our youth in Virginia, but really attacking the youth all over the world and children. Make no mistake, there's no accident how uh, certain, how do I say this, certain, certain mindsets, certain groups of certain persuasions are doing their best to infiltrate public schools. In fact, they have done so. And they're doing and using every device they can to inform and form and reform children and youth of tomorrow. Because they know that if they can affect the youth, affect the children, then tomorrow or the nation in a few years from now can dramatically be affected. In fact, the nation we have now is a result of that accomplishment. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. We'll try not to. David recognized that we serve a gracious God who, who does bless us abundantly, but we need to recognize that that abundant blessing has to begin with our youth. Make no mistake about it. In fact, as I consider this point, make no mistake, it's encouraging to me because what did we observe today in the service? If you'll notice on the praise team, we had several of our teenagers involved. We had... A young man playing the drums, beating those drums with all of his heart. Playing those drums as he has so many Sundays before, passionately and with zeal. Nobody wants a pansy drummer. <laughs> Nobody wants a drummer who just, I'll play my drum for you, you know. We want a drummer with zeal and passion. We encourage the breaking of sticks. We have a budget. We can buy more sticks. Amen? Amen. That's for you. He was so proud. A couple weeks ago, he came and said, Pastor, I broke a stick. And he showed it to me. You know, I should have went and bought you some sticks then, man. I owe you some sticks, all right? Young ladies up here singing. You know, if we don't see our young people and parents, that's a heavy spiritual responsibility. Let me just say this. I know with COVID and all the restrictions and sort of all that's still going on, but there's going to come a day where we have, to, we have to do more than just be a part of church online. We need to bring our children to the house of the Lord. We have children's church. We have nursery. We have Wednesday night youth. We have revolt. Our youth are our future. We must pour the word of God into their lives at home and in the house of God. And so look at what David, as he, as he prays, he prays for the sons and he prays for the daughters. And for the sons, he prays, let our youth be as, let our sons in their youth be as grown up plants. In other words, God's begun a seed of greatness in you, men. He's got a call on your life. He's called you to grow up. And be a tree that bears fruit. Be a tree that grows. And as your branches grow throughout every year as you grow, may your limbs grow and may your strength and stature grow and all that. I, I, I think I wish I would have prayed as a younger person, God help me to be six foot three. <laughs> It'd have been, I would have loved to have been a little bit taller. God, I, look, I'm, I am what I am. Here I am. 
Thank you, Lord. I'm not complaining. I'm sorry. But he said, God, let our sons be as grown up plants that, that grow up to be trees that, trees that bear fruit, branches that are strong, the kind of tree where somebody can f- go and find shelter. Make no mistake, men, as men of the home, God's called you to be the man of God. He's called you to be a, a man where your family can find shelter and protection and provision. He's called you to be men who love God and serve God and love your wife and love your children passionately and with zeal. And we're living in a day where the enemy is wussifying men. There's men more worried about where. Oh, thank you, Lord. I was getting ready to talk about wearing pink. I just said it. I won't say it. But we're living in a day where men are more worried about being feminine. Oh, boy. Look, you get mad at me if you want. I am telling you, I, there's, a, there's, a, there's something going on when men are no longer men that God has called them to be. Now, you can call me old-fashioned all you want to, but I, I just have got a feeling women want a man who's a man. Men, women don't need a man who looks prettier than you. Now, right now, somebody's probably already turned me off on Facebook. For all I know, they're reporting me. Go ahead. Report me all you want. But our world needs men to grow up and be fruitful, fruit-bearing, God-fearing trees, deeply rooted in the Word of God, growing for the glory of God, a shelter for your family to find protection and safety. And I'll tell you what, ladies, look, he's, look what he prayed for our daughters. He said, and our daughters as corner pillars fashioned as for a palace. Thank God he said palace and not a barn. You know why? Because women, you're, I got to be careful. My wife, if I get out of order, you come up here and smack me. But women, God made you beautiful for a reason. No doubt about it, every strong man here had a wonderful, awesome mama. Where would we as men be if it weren't for the strength of mothers who know the importance of holding their husband up at home and interceding and calling upon God and loving their family and loving their children and being the women that God has called you to be. Indeed, ladies, we wouldn't be the fruitful trees God's called us to be if you weren't holding our branches up. And I'm probably no, not where anywhere getting near theologically what I need to get to this verse, but man, I just think it's beautiful imagery. Pillars. Fit for a palace. So make no mistake, as you consider just the balance of church, and if you consider the activity of ministry and who runs ministry and who does ministry and who volunteers the most, women are fitting that narrative. You realize that? In fact, I don't know how churches would make it if it weren't for women in ministry. My wife clapped really loud there. I just want to point that out. I think she really likes that point. It's a good point. Amen? It's a great point. Man, I feel good about that one. Yeah! And then he says in verse 13, you see, he recognized the importance of the people, not only for their children, but the necessities of life. Look what he prays. Let our garners be full, furnishing every kind of produce. And our flocks bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our fields. Let our cattle bear without mishap and without loss. And let there be no outcry in our streets. 
every aspect of life. David, as he's praying, not only for the children and the youth of tomorrow, the future of the nation, but also every need. God, every provision. God, you are our source. You are the gracious God who blesses abundantly. Oh, I, I, I grew up on a farm. I didn't grow up on a farm. I grew up with a, far, a granddad who was a farmer. And so I was so blessed to be working on the farm many times in the summer or in the fall. I learned so much about life and so much about God really now in hindsight. Working on that farm and the value and, and the dependence of a farmer, even on the rain. The, the farmer's dependence on rain and even the seasons and being able to judge the seasons and knowing when to sow and knowing when to reap. Knowing when to plant. Knowing when to bring in the harvest. All of these things are so important and vital for the life of a farmer. Understanding and being able to watch your herds, your cattle, your sheep, even your chickens. Chick-fil-A, watch out for Chick-fil-A. So David prayed over the necessities of the people as well. And God cares. He graciously wants to bless you abundantly. And he does bless us abundantly. Notice there's nothing in this prayer that says, God, make us rich. God, make us better than anybody else. He's saying, God, be our provider. Be our sustainer. God, with the cattle you've given us, bless our cattle. Let them bear and give us more cattle. God, watch over our fields. Bless our fields. I tell you what, you want to be a godly farmer, and you haven't been doing this yet. In fact, most of the time, most farmers I know are praying people. Most farmers I know know the importance and the value. They've learned they better pay, pray over the harvest. They better pray over the fields. My granddad, many times, would, I mean, he, he worried about it. God's called us to be sons and daughters of the Most High God, and he's promised to take care of your needs. He didn't promise you filet mignon every, every lunch and dinner, but he did promise to sustain you. In fact, we're very blessed in this country. I think for, for most extensive purposes, most everybody in this room is going to be able to have a meal today. We're blessed. We're blessed abundantly. Can you imagine what it would be like to wonder where you're going to get your next meal? So God bless, bless our people, bless our, give us the needs. And then this last part, and I'll close here in a, one second, I really will. He says, how blessed are the people who are so situated. What is he talking about? The ones who are situated under the blessing of God. Well, how do you get under the blessing of God? You've got to humble yourself before God. Right? You've got to submit yourself and yield yourself and give yourself to God. We live in a world that wants God to bless them, but they want God to bless them the way they want to be blessed. They want God to serve them, if you will. The arrogance of humanity. God serve me. God do what I want. He's God. And life will teach you and God will teach us that, you know, God's ways are far above our ways. His thoughts supersede our thoughts. You know what I mean? That scripture that what I'm talking about. And so he said, how blessed are the people who are so situated. How blessed are the people whose God is the Lord. Blessed people whose God is the Lord. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I ask you the question, do you want to live under the blessing of a loving, mighty, and gracious God? A God who cares for us personally a God who delivers us victoriously, a God who blesses us abundantly. That opportunity is before you here today. As we search our soul, as we consider, and we live in such a time where the enemy is trying to use fear, anxiety, to destroy people's lives. I didn't come today to try to use worldly events to try to scare you or fit some narrative that I, 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 that's not my purpose here today. My purpose is to preach the word of God 
as I feel like I've done the best I could to do. And for us to take a moment before we leave, before we turn, turn the service off online right now, let's take a moment, bow our heads, and say, God, search me. As David prayed, God, search me and know me. Lord, if there's any falsehood in our life, if there's any manner in which we have misrepresented or been a bad representation of God, maybe, we, maybe you posted something this week on Facebook you shouldn't have posted. Maybe you said something around somebody you shouldn't have said. Maybe you did something you shouldn't have done. And you know that's the case right now. I'm not asking you to raise your hand to admit that. I'm not asking you to repost on Facebook because of that. I'm asking you right now before God, just you and the Lord right now, you and the Holy Spirit, say, God, search me and know me. If there's anything in my heart, anything in my life that's affecting me, that's filtering my life. Search me and know me, O oh God. Forgive me. Then we're going to pray. So as we pray and as I lead in this prayer, you've got to make it your prayer. And I want to encourage you to pray along with me. If you want to come to the altar, you can find a place at the altar. If you want to turn around and kneel at your chair right now, you can do that as well. If you want to find a wall to go lean up against and pray, you can do that as well. But let's respond. Father, as I pray, as I bow my head and close my eyes, I join with my brothers and sisters in Christ. God, I acknowledge, Lord, I have not been picture perfect all the time. None of us have. So God, as we consider your word today, as we come before you in this moment, this time, this opportunity, Lord, to search our souls, God, search us right now. Holy Spirit, convict where there needs to be conviction that brings us back into right fellowship with you. Lord, help us, Lord, if there's anything in our life that we need to confess right now in this prayer, all across this room, those joining us on Facebook or YouTube, our social media platforms, Father, right now search us. And as we, as we recognize those things in our heart and spirit right now that we need to confess before you, do so right now. In Jesus' name, hear, yes, Lord. Hear every right now, every confession, every individual, everything, every, every word, every action, every thought. We submit it to you right now. Search us and know us. Lord, thank you that you are gracious. Thank you that you do love us personally. You do deliver us victoriously. You do bless us abundantly. Father, help us. Lord, to indeed walk in that personal relationship with you. Help us, Father, to remember we're saved and redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. We're made righteous not of our works. We're made righteous by the blood of Jesus Christ. So as we confess every sin, as we confess every fault, as we confess every mistake this week that we've either said, action taken, or thought considered, Lord, we put it before you right now wash and cleanse in the name of Jesus Christ. And God, in the world that we live and find ourselves in such, such turmoil, such unknowing, such fear and such anxiety, Lord, help us to stay close to the foot of the cross. Lord, help us to remember that, Lord, you are coming soon. That, Lord, we are to be about the Father's business. Your word tells us to look up to hope for our redemption is drawing nigh. It's drawing near. It's close. So, God, we lift up our brothers and sisters all across this world. And, God, we ask you to help us to live in fear of you, humbly submitted to you, loving you. Lord, help us to be hungry more than ever for your word to be an action and part of our life, leading our life, guiding us, informing our very thoughts and decisions, helping us, molding us, changing us. In Jesus' name, for your glory. And everyone said, amen and amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Glad you were all here. I'm telling you what, you look, you look wonderful. It's a great crowd. I'm glad to see more and more people coming back. I'm glad you're here today. 
And I'm praying and believing. Amen. Give yourselves a hand. We, we, uh, the sides are looking good and the middles, I mean, we're working on it, right? Brother David, we just got to fill these two front rows here. Sweetheart, you're going to have to get on it. You got some work to do. I'm going to pay for that. Hey, let's all, uh, something I, the, the thought occurred to me today, we're going to close a little bit differently here in a moment. Uh, I'm going to follow what the Lord, I believe, has led me to do in that way we close today. Uh, but I want to thank you for your giving. I want to ask you to continue uh, to remember the Lord in your giving, your tithing and offering. Pam, you got some family and friends with you here today? Your sisters. Hey, sisters. She just turned 30. Yep. It's a good birthday. Uh, thank you for your giving, your faithfulness to giving and tithe and offering. How many, who else had a birthday this week? Raise your hand if you had a birthday this week. Anybody? Happy birthday. You just turn, don't, you're not supposed to say. <laughs> She's young enough to say it, right? Well, you're like five years behind Pam. Uh, anybody else have a birthday this week? I know I sent some birthday cards out. Look, it, it, uh, please don't take it personally. If I, when I'm aware of a birthday on a Sunday morning service, I, sometimes I make the mistake of making a deal about it. My mind goes that way, okay? I am what I am. But uh, we are glad you're here. Glad to have some family here, friends here, uh, visitors here from all the way across the Oregon Trail. Uh, great to have family with us. Uh, and uh, look forward to seeing you all in the house of the Lord again. But yeah, I'm sorry, back to tithe and offering. Uh, you can give uh, in the boxes. You can also give online at kempsfieldchurch.com or you can text to give at 757 757- 250-4483. Uh, you can give that way. Uh, so we appreciate your giving. Uh, and as we pray, uh, l- let me pray over the offering and then we're going to be dismissed. Father God, we give unto you the offering, the tithe, and we bless you. We give it to you. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the provision you've given us. Lord, we pray your anointing upon the offering today that you would use it for the upbuilding of your kingdom. Lord, not only for uh, local ministry here in this church, the daycare, but also ministry in the Hampton Roads area that we're a part of, also ministry in the foreign fields of the gospel. Lord, we pray your blessing and your favor. You would use it for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name. And everyone said amen and amen. All right, I'm going to, there's no script for this, but I'm going to follow what I feel like the Lord's led me to do. I'm going to ask everyone to join me standing. And um, I'm weird enough, so I invite you, sometimes you just got to be a little weird. I want everyone this is not weird, but this is very spiritual, actually, if you think about this. I want you to take your hand, and I want you to anoint your own forehead, and then I want you to repeat this prayer if you, feel, if you so feel. Say, Father, say, Heavenly Father, I anoint myself. I ask you to use me this week. Fill me with your spirit. Use me for your glory. Anoint every step I take. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Use me as a light and a witness for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. May the Lord be with you. Go in peace and glory. Shine brightly for Jesus this week. We love you all. Thank you for being here. And thank you everyone online. Good to see you here today. God bless you.